Introduction of Benjamin King of Ben King's Verse. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Ben King's Verse by Benjamin King. Introduction by John McGovern. So far as we know, this young man, now so suddenly dead, was the drollest mimic and greatest humorist of our region. He existed as the welcome and mirthful shadow of conventional and tiresome things. He began as the expositor of The Maiden's Prayer on the piano, where each accented note was flat or sharp, and the music flowed rapidly or over great difficulties as the score might determine. He arose and, looking half-witted, recited with unapproachable modesty the stammering delight which he would feel if he could be by her. He frowzled his hair and became Paderewski, who forthwith fell upon the piano tooth and nail, tore up the track, derailed the symphony, went down the stairs and shook the furnace, fainted at the pedals, and was carried out rigid by supers, the greatest pianist of any age. He wrote, If I Should Die Tonight, a parody that was accepted as the true original, the sun, the center of the great If I Should Die Tonight system of thought and poetry. He wrote the poet's lament that there was nothing to eat but food, and nowhere to come but off. The artists of the newspaper world generously sprang to his side. They placed him pictorially before the people and determined with almost prophetic spirit that our small circle should not alone dwell with undiminishing laughter upon the gambols of Ben King. He was coldly, then not coldly, then warmly received by the church fairs, the clubs, and the elks where he got a supper if any were left. At last he charged a small sum for appearing publicly, and this sum was rapidly enlarging, and his fortune was in sight, when the hotel porter found him dead in his room at Bowling Green, Kentucky. During the years we knew him, he never spoke to us in a disparaging way concerning any other person, and unless Paderewski's comb was ruffled by Ben's exhibition of hair and haste in piano playing, no parody or perk or prank of Ben King ever depended for its success upon the wounding of another creature's feelings. We all accounted him a genius, and while we could not guess what he would do next, we awaited his performances with complacence, laughing as if we owned him and had ourselves ordered his latest jeu d'esprit. We deplored the untimely moment of his end. We held beautiful, solemn, and impressive memorial services over his body, with music by the sweet singers whom he had loved when he was alive, and touching words by ministers of the gospel. We buried him affectionately as one who could least be spared from our circle, and as we were the witnesses of what he did, we now change ourselves to be the testimonies of his rare talents. End of Introduction Section 2 of Ben King's Verse This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Ben King's Verse by Benjamin King. Biography. Benjamin Franklin King, Jr. was born at St. Joseph, Michigan, March 17, 1857, and died at Bowling Green, Kentucky, April 7, 1894. He was married November 27, 1883, to Asenath Bell Latham of St. Joseph, Michigan, by Professor David Swing at his residence in Chicago. The wife and two sons, Bennett Latham King, aged nine, and Spencer P. King, aged five, survive him. While yet a child, music came to Ben King as an inspiration. His infant fingers touched the keys of a piano and a ripple of notes, strange and sweet, startled his parents into the consciousness that a great talent had been given unto him. How odd a boy he was, no one understood him, 
on the edge of the marsh he would sit during hours at a time under the spell of the weird music amid the rushes as he grew up lacking the instincts that make men successful in business he was pronounced a failure not by those who had warmed themselves in the glow of his poetic nature but by the man who believed that to turn over a dime and thereby to make a dollar of it was the most gracious faculty that could be bestowed upon a member of the human family but when ben king died st joseph became more widely known in one day than hundreds of excursions and a thousand orchards had served to advertise in the past on that april morning people living in the far east and the far west asked the question where is st joseph ben king was not only a man of music he was a poet a gentle satirist and a humorist of the highest order even company was brightened by his coming every man felt better for having heard his quaint remarks there was about him a droll a charming irresponsibility a thomas hood from michigan i find as i have found for the fiftieth time while striving to write these lines that i am still too much under the shock caused by his death to write dispassionately of him my judgment the common sense that one should bring to bear upon such a subject is obscured by the vivid picture of an early morning and down a dark hallway i still hear a violent knocking and then comes a throbbing silence and out of that silence comes an excited whisper ben king is dead opie reed end of section two If I Should Die by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienauber If I should die tonight, and you should come to my cold corpse, and say, weeping and heartsick, o'er my lifeless clay, if I should die tonight, and you should come in deepest grief and woe, and say, here's that ten dollars that I owe, I might arise in my large white cravat, and say, what's that? If I should die tonight, and you should come to my cold corpse and kneel, clasping my beer to show the grief you feel, I say, if I should die tonight, and you should come to me, and there and then just even hint about paying me that ten, I might arise the while, but I'd drop dead again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Say When and Say It by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T Write me a poem that hasn't been writ Sing me a song that hasn't been sung yet String out a strain that hasn't been strung And ring me a chime that hasn't been rung yet Paint me a picture but leave out the paint Pile up a pile of old scenes of my schoolery leave me alone i would fain meditate and mourn all the moments i lost in tomfoolery tell me a tale that dropped out of a star push me a pun that is pungent not earthy i must have something sharp strident and strong to eke out a laugh or be moderately murphy give me a love that has never been loved not knowing the glance of the bold and unwary a cherub abreast with the saints up above, and I'll get along and be passably merry. But come on the fly to me, come on the jump, don't hang around on the outskirts and walk to me, throw out your chest well and hold up your head, say when and say it, or else don't you talk to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Getting My Soul Into Shape by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienauber Reckon the angel what rolled away the stone And let the good shepherd escape Some day he'll fly down to this prison of sin And liberate all that's prepared to come in So I's getting my soul into shape 
get my soul into shape, for you see, it's a mighty big stone that's laying on me. Mighty big stone, yes, indeedy. I hope the good angel will have heaps of strength, or else bring old Samson along, case the sin on my soul's more than forty foot deep. You see, I've been one of these wandering sheep, and it's gwine to need somebody strong. Gwine to need somebody strong, don't you see? It's a mighty big weight that's arresting on me. Powerful big weight. Yes, indeedy. I was getting my soul into shape for the day when Peter gins taking his toll, ready to lay down my burden and rest, ready to take up the cross of the blessed, ready to enter the fall. Getting my soul into shape, don't you see? Does a big load of sin been resting on me? Big load of sin. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Evolution by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber. We seem to exist in a hazardous time, drifting along here through space. Nobody knows just when we begun or how far we've gone in the race. Scientists argue we're shot from the sun, while others were going right back. And some say we've always been here more or less and seem to establish the fact course it's something that nobody knows far as i've read or can see and them as does know all about the whole scheme why none of em never agree now why i think it's a perilous time what do we know about them spots up there on that glorious orb of the day smart man has argued and lots of the brainiest folks has been ciphering out and all sorts of stories has riz about what the sun's made of or how it's composed and lots of em think that it is of course it's something that nobody knows nobody under the sun nary a body or being i suppose nary a being but one take evolution and what does she say about how we all sprung from a ape and there's the gorilla and big chimpanzee, patterned exactly our shape. And I've seen some folks, and I guess so have you, and it ain't none of our business neither, that actually looked like they sprung from an ape, and didn't have fur to spring either. Of course, it's something that everyone knows. I don't see how you folks can doubt it. Supposing they have some resemblance to us. No use in writing about it. If a feller'll take a geology book and not go a rushing long through it, but just sort of figure the thing out itself, what I mean is ply itself to it. He'll see we've dug up folks ten thousand years old, built on a ponderous plan. Somehow this knocks Mr. Moses all out, and Adam the biblical man of course it's something that nobody knows nobody under the sun an area body or being i suppose an area being but one end of poem this recording is in the public domain get her in your grain by benjamin king Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. The old plough hoss is busy, breshin' flies off wid his tail. The old dog's got a move on him that's exactly like a snail. The meadow grass is noddin', and off yonder in the lane, I can hear the tree toads warnin', better get a in your green. Don't you hear the frogs a gurglin'? They're out yonder in the pond. What's the matter with the catbird? Don't you hear his voice respond? Ain't the hull of em a tellin' you in language mighty plain? Don't be frivlin' way yo moments. 
better get a in your grain ain't de bumblebee a hummin amongst de clover tops and flowers whilst de old clock am a tickin way de minutes and de hours child you's gotta be a hustlin to catch de wisdom train don't waste no opportunities but get her in your grain end of poem this recording is in the public domain jane jones by benjamin king read for LibriVox.org by ilia tivin at tivin.info jane jones keeps talking to me all the time and says you must make it a rule to study your lessons and work hard and learn and never be absent from school remember the story of eliahu bird and how he clumb up to the top got all the knowledge that he ever had down in the blacksmith shop Jane Jones, she honestly said it was so. Maybe he did. I don't know. Of course, what's a keeping me away from the top is not never having no blacksmith shop. She said that Ben Franklin was awfully poor, but full of ambition and brains, and studied philosophy all of his whole life, and see what he got for his pains. He brought electricity out from the sky with a kite and a bottle and key. And we're owning him more than anyone else for all the bright lights that we see. Jane Jones, she honestly said it was so. Maybe he did. I don't know. Of course, what all has been hindering me is not having any kite, lightning, or key. Jane Jones said Abe Lincoln had no books at all and used to split rails when a boy. And General Grant was a tamer by trade and lived way out in Illinois. So when the Great War in the South first broke out, he stood out on the side of the right. And when Lincoln called him to take charge of things, he won nearly every blamed fight. Jane Jones, she honestly said it was so. Maybe he did, I don't know. Still, I am to blame not by a big sight. For I ain't never had any battles to fight. She said that Columbus was out at the knees when he first thought up his big scheme, and told all the Spaniards and Italians too, and all of them said twas a dream. But Queen Isabella just listened to him and pawned all of her jewels of worth, and brought him to Santa Maria and said, Go hunt up the rest of the earth. Jane Jones, she honestly said it was so. Maybe he did, I don't know. Of course, that may be, but then you must allow, there ain't no land to discover just now. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Elopement by Benjamin King. Rent for LibriVox.org by Catherine Rivera. I'm out at the house of my Mary, Mary so young and so fair, but her father and mother and sister and brother and all of the family are there. I'm now on the sofa with Mary, Mary with bright golden hair, but her father and mother and sister and brother and all of the family are there. I'm way up the river with Mary, picnicking in the cool air, but her father and mother and sister and brother and all of the family are there. I'm in the surf bathing with Mary. Her form is beyond compare. But her father and mother and sister and brother and all of the family are there. I'm down at the Parsons with Mary. It's rather a private affair. But her father and mother and sister and brother, well, none of the family is there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Folks in Hisen by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber He married her cause she had money and some property left from her husband's income. But both of the families was awfully stirred and said the worst things that the town ever heard. And her folks in hisen or hisen and herin never spoke to each other from what I can learn. His folks begun it, and just said that she was the worst acting thing they ever did see. 
and ought to be ashamed for being so bold cause her husband he hadn't had time to get cold and her folks and his'n er his'n and her'n never spoke to each other from what i can learn her folks they all set up that he was no good and if twasn't for her well he'd have to saw wood then all of her kin every blasted relation said she'd lowered herself in their estimation so her folks and his'n er his'n and her'n never spoke to each other from what i can learn the sisters they told this is tween you and i at they thought that she wanted her husband to die and they whispered around don't you lisp a word the awfulest things that a soul ever heard so her folks and his'n er his'n and her'n never spoke to each other from what i can learn they said that a travelling man or a drummer who stopped at a hotel a long time last summer that he no it wasn't that now let me see that she or something like that seems to me well her folks and his'n or his'n and her'n never spoke to each other from what i can learn i hear that the families keep up the old fight a roasting each other from mornin' till night but the young married couple they move to the city where gossip don't go but i think it's a pity that her folks and his'n and his'n and her'n never speak to each other from what i can learn end of poem this recording is in the public domain the yaller jacket's nest by benjamin king read for librivox dot org by scotty smith if i could only wander back to boyhood just one day so st i could have my chice again of games we used to play i'd let the cots and marbles go and say come on boys let's all go out a huntin for the yaller jacket's nest just to lay up in the shadow of the fence once again of the old vacant lot at the cows pastured in where the dandelions were bloomin and there take a rest while you listen to the music round the yaller jacket's nest there was one at ours went along and romped with us and raced with her sunbonnet a hangin back and curls down to her waist in the checkered little frock she wore of gingham what a pest she was to us when huntin for the yaller jacket's nest it's the prime of the blossoms that's a hangin from the trees and the music of the buzzin that brings lonesome memories for it seems as if i heard her say you better look out lest they all swarm out and sting you from the yaller jacket's nest sometimes i think i hear her voice and see her eyes of blue that borried all their color from the sky that peeks at you between the clouds and summer after rain has fell and blessed the flowers and opening blossoms round the yaller jacket's nest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Hank Died by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienauber Mother, the shadows are gathering in, Shadows of sunshine and shadows of sin, Shadows of sorrow and shadows of gloom, all of em gatherin now in my room see over there near the mantel-place wall is the darkest shadow what's that a call oh let in the light keep that shadow away the one with the sickle that cuts to-day and far over there in the sunlands west i'll work in the pasture after i rest oh to get out of this valley of sin up in the cool of the hillside again where are the boys all away where's meliss who's holding my hand and whose arm is this oh here comes the shadow that beckons what pain it must not come near me hear that that rain on the windows see down by the footboard where the curtain moves a shadow is there Coming on tiptoe, it's after the light. Oh, don't give it welcome, that shadow of night. Don't leave me waiting here now in the dark. 
The shadows are entering. What? Music? Hark! Can that be the soft winds of summer that send their sighs o'er the fields for the loss of a friend? So cold? I'm getting so cold, so cold. Oh, why are the shadows so bold, so bold? Here comes the grim shadow, the shadow of death, the cavern-eyed shadow that asks for my breath. Goodbye, said the toiler. Goodbye, everyone. Then somebody whispered, The reaper is done. His head fell back, and down by his side, his white hand dropped. That's how Hank died. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Often by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. How Often They stood on the bridge at midnight in a park not far from town. They stood on the bridge at midnight because they didn't sit down. The moon rose o'er the city behind the dark church spire. The moon rose o'er the city and kept on rising higher. How Often, oh, how often! They whispered words so soft, how often, oh, how often, how often, oh, how oft. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Benton Harbor Mish by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber. Sometimes I ain't a thing to do, and so just for the nonce, I think of things I didn't see out on Midway Plaisance. Although they claimed that every tribe and nation, seems to me, was represented, yet there's some I simply didn't see. I went all through the Cairo Street and saw the Lexor Great. I saw the South Sea Islanders and them from Congo State. I saw the Patagonians, but darn it all, my wish was more to see them funny folks from Benton Harbor, Mish. I took in all the buildings that was prominent on the grounds, got in with a Columbian guard, and we just went the rounds. I says to him, I'm here this week to take the whole thing in. I might not get a chance to go against the thing again. Outside of horticulture and some of the smaller fruits, I want to see them wolverines that's still a-wearin' boots. So don't show me no minin' or animals or fish. I'd rather see them curious from Benton Harbor Mish. What I care for foreign folks that come from pagan lands. I've heard and read enough of Pag and heard the tom-tom bands. I've seen enough of Egypt and Algiers and ancient Rome. And now I'm just a spilin' for something right round home. My gosh, all Friday, take your Turks and all your foreign kit. I want to see them Wolverines, and I ain't seen em yet. Old Michigan I'm after. Seems as if I'd hear the swish of breakers like I used to in Benton Harbor, Mish. So comin' out from there, I says, we'll take another route. Course you may know your business, but I know what I'm about. I'm on a hunt for friends just now, not Japs or Javanese, or sore eyed Eskimo or Coons or biased eyed Chinese. I've heard enough of hot, 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 got frightened at the roar round Hagenbecks, and shook hands with the Sultan of Johor, until I'm simply tired out, and now my only wish is just to see them old-time folks from Benton Harbor, Mish. I walked till I got dusty and thought I'd like to wash. When looking up, I saw a tower. Twas Michigan, by gosh. Come on, I says, I'll show you now some folks you never saw. Human beings from Muskegon, Dwajak, and Saginaw. Them folks that raise a celery way out in Kalamazoo. Cassopolis and Globeville and Ypsilanti, too. St. Joe and Barry and Center. I guess I got my wish. I joined the Jays and we went back to Benton Harbor, Mish. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Asphodel by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Asphodel, carest thou not for me, lone Asphodel? O flower, shall all the summer days long gone roll into space remembered not? What spell, nay, more, what dream, what fantasy is this? E'en one small hour to gaze and love. Tis bliss like Gyges knew behind the chamber door in days of old, those mellow days of yore. Ah, no, sweet flower, say not farewell, I pray, but let thine odor loiter yet a while, and linger thou beside my lonely way, spreading thy perfume. And each tender leaf, sparkling with dew, like tears in eyes of grief, eager am I to pluck thee from thy stem, to have thee near, and in thy fragrance dwell, trusting the ever fairy asphodel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flower's Ball by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Catherine Rivera. There is an olden story, tis a legend, so I'm told, how the florets gave a banquet in the ivied days of old how the posies gave a party once that wound up with a ball how they held it in a valley down in flowery kingdom hall the flowers of every clime were there of high and low degree all with their petals polished in sweet aromatic glee they met down in this woodland in the soft and ambient air each in its lolling loveliness exhaled a perfume rare an orchestra of bluebells sat upon a mossy knoll, and pealed forth gentle music that quite captured every soul. The holly hawked a pistol just to buy a suit of clothes, and danced with all the florets but the modest blushing rose. The morning glory shining seemed reflecting all the glow of dawn and took a partner, it was young Miss Mistletoe. Miss Maggie Nolia from the south danced with Forget-Me-Not. Sweet William took Miss Pink in tow and danced a slow gavotte. Thus everything went swimmingly, amongst perfume bells and bows, and every flower it reveled save the modest blushing rose. Miss Fuchsia sat around and told, for floral emulation, that she had actually refused to dance with a carnation. The coxcomb, quite a dandy there, began to pine and mope, until he had been introduced to young Miss Heliotrope. Sir Cactus took Miss Lily, and he swung her so about, she asked Sweet Pea to call a flower and put the cactus out. Miss Pansy took her poppy, and she waltzed him down the line, till they ran against Old Sunflower with Miss Honeysuckle Vine. The others at the party that went whirling through the mazy were Mrs. Rhododendron, Daffodil, and Little Daisy. Miss Petunia, Miss Verbena, Violet, and Sweet Miss Dahlia came fashionably late arrayed in very rich regalia. Miss Begonia, Sweet Miss Buttercup, Miss Lilac, and Miss Clover, Young Dandelion came in late when all the feast was over. The only flower that sent regrets and really couldn't come, who lived in the four hundred was the vain chrysanthemum. One flower lit at the table, grew quite ill we must regret, and every posy wondered too just what Miss Mignonette. Young Tulip chose Miss Orchid from the first and did not part with her until Miss Mary Gold fell with a bleeding heart. But, ah, Miss Rose sat pensively till every young bud passed her, just when to fill the last quadrille the little china asked her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sun's Comin' Back by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. Hush, chillin' hush, case the sun's done come back again. Back again a shinin' on the old cypress tree. Hush, chillin' hush, it surely am a fact again. The sun's done come back again, back again to me. Hush, chillin' hush, for the sun's done come back again. Pushing y'all a glory round in every spot it finds. Dancing on the cradle, and old Chloe with the ladle. And coaxing out the blossoms on the honeysuckle vines. 
Hush, chillin', hush, case the soft winds come back again, back again, bringin' all the glory of the spring. My heart's just a throbbin', for off yonder is the robin, and the blackbird am a cluckin', and I know I hear them sing. Hush, chillin', hush, case the sun's done come back again, bringin' back the fact again, I's a gettin' mighty old. I often sit and ponder, and I wonder, and I wonder. How many times it's coming back before I reach the fold? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The River St. Joe by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Where the bumblebee sips and the clover is red, and the zephyrs come laden with peach blow perfume, where the thistle down pauses in search of the rose, and the myrtle and the woodbine and the wild ivy grows, where the catbird pipes up and it sounds most divine, off there in the branches of some lonely pine. Oh, give me the spot that I once used to know, by the side of the placid old river St. Joe. How oft on its banks I have sunk in a dream, where the willows bent over me kissing the stream, my boat with its nose sort of resting on shore, while the cattail stood guarding a runaway oar. It appeared like to me that they sort of had some way of knowing that I would soon get overcome. With the meadow lark singing just over the spot, I didn't care whether I floated or not, just resting out there for an hour or so on the banks of the tranquil old river St. Joe where the tall grasses nod at the close of the day, and the sycamore's shadow is slanting away, where the whippoorwill chants from a far distant limb, just as if the whole business was all made for him. Oh, it's now that my thoughts living back on the wings of the rail and the die-away song that he sings brings the tears to my eyes that drip off into rhyme, and I live once again in the old summertime, for my soul, it seems, caught in old time's undertow, and I'm floating away down the river St. Joe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Robin and the Chicken by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama the robin and the chicken a plump little robin flew down from a tree to hunt for a worm which he happened to see a frisky young chicken came scampering by and gazed at the robin with wandering eye said the chick what a queer-looking chicken is that its wings are so long and its body so fat while the robin remarked loud enough to be heard dear me an exceedingly strange-looking bird can you sing robin asked and the chicken said no but asked in his turn if the robin could crow so the bird sought a tree and the chicken a wall and each thought the other knew nothing at all end of poem this recording is in the public domain baby up at battenberg's by benjamin king Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Heard about what's happened? Why, of course she has. Baby up at Battenberg's. Hope it ain't the lass. Doctor come at eight o'clock. Rig all splashed with clay. Dad a trampling up the hall. Skirry, I'd say. Kind of still round the house. Folks on tiptoe walk. Tell the door is open. And we hear a squawk. Doctor whispers something. Daddy hollers, no. Doctor says, twelve pounder. Daddy whoops out, show. Daddy happier in a clam. Mother doing well. Baby up at Battenberg's. Haven't you heard tell? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
No Harm Done by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Excuse me, Mr. Handy, for a drop in you a line, but the fact is I've arrived in town and feeling mighty fine. I'm stopping at the press club, er, uh, that's where I take my meals, and I must say I'm agitating some colossal deals. But what I want to ask you is, that seems a bothering me, is your hippodrome at Jackson Park. That's what I want to see. I'd lay all careful pains aside and wearing a steady grin, for I thought you could work some scheme of getting of me in. Course if you say there isn't, I'll say I was just in fun, and we'll just let it go at that. There's no harm done. Say handy, what I want is so's I can push my fears all round the whole world's fair ground and see everything there is. And when a Columbian guard comes up, unmannery and gruff, I'll flash the pass you gave me handy. That'll be enough. And passing on and mirroring my face in the lagoon, where that fellow is a-standing now. What's his name? Neptune? I want to see you, Major. Yes, I want to grasp your fin. Cause I know at you could work some scheme of getting of me in. Cause if you say there isn't, I'll say I was just in fun, and we'll just let it go at that. There's no harm done. I want to see the state buildings and all there is there. I want to see that queer machine that turns out compressed air, the administration building and the agricultural hall. I tell you, Major, honestly, I want to see it all. I'll be alone most of the time, and nothing's going to please me better than to get acquainted with those Javanese. Don't say a word, say handy, I must brace you again. Is there any possibility of getting of me in? Of course, if you say there isn't, I'll say I was just in fun, and we'll just let it go with that. There's no harm done. I've read the weekly papers, Major, out at Old St. Joe. There ain't been nothing in em that the country folks don't know. Some wants to see machinery, some paintings and some fish. Some want to hear the music too, but I tell you my wish is just to see them foreign girls from Spain and sunny France and Abdu something what's his name that's got them girls at dance out there in Midway Plaisance, and the Sultan and his kin. Oh, Handy, you must fix some scheme of getting of me in. Course, if you say there isn't, I'll say I's just in fun, and we'll just let it go at that. There's no harm done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fates by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Fortune came to a youth one day and dressed him up in his best, while society smiled and caressed him. Along came Tor with a hammer and saw to test it, and all three pressed him. Manhood came as it usually does, to beard him. Fortune stole in and sat by his side, but feared him. Ambition came with wonderful schemes and steered him, but all three queered him. Wisdom came and knocked at his door. He spurned him. Frivolity came on bicycle wheels and turned him. Remorse at last came up and stung him and burned him and all three churned him. Poverty opened his door and found him, and sought him. Paralysis crouched in a corner and finally caught him. Idleness claimed the prize because she taught him, but all three got him. Old Sharon rode up in Thames' canoe and ferried him over the creek. 
when an undertaker hurried in, dropped sand on his box, while a parson talked him and worried him. But the whole crowd buried him. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Paraphrase by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber. The master of the manor house each morn, upon his shining steed through arbored gates, rides forth and out upon the dusty road to yon small hamlet smiling on the hill. At eve rides back with swaying form. He meets the faithful footman, and, his charger placed, he wends his way into the mansion hall, while I, down here in meadowlands all day, I only s -s stack the hay. The opulent lord, when mellow days are come, at the high note of the red-combed chanticleer, with horse and hound and merry crowd now bent upon the chase, swift through fox-scented roads, stopping, perchance, at many a wayside inn, the music of the jingling glass is his, while I down here in perfumed clover fields hear but the music of the lark and jay, I only s -s stack the hay. Lone is the mansion on the sunlit hill, save for the daughter of the chivalric lord, who comes now, finger-kissed by high-topped sheaves, pausing the while, half startled by the quail, to where the haycocks dot the sallow fields, comes in the roseate flush of maidenhood, comes with a truant smile upon her lips, and romping up to me, exclaiming, Say! B -b but I, I only s -s stack the hay. Then spake she soft as runs a summer brook, or novel of some scribe of amorous mind, how far the huntsman must be on the road, because the sun comes through my window blind, within strange creakings about the halls, without the scurrying leaves. So lonely am I now, I've wandered here to ask whate'er betide. Wouldst cease thy work? Pray, must you toil to-day? Well, well, yes, I s -s say, I have t -t to st -s -s stack the hay. Ah, sir, she then replied, a banquet spread but yesternight for me with many guests and suitors gathered round the festal board sought ardently my hand, and one forth brought a golden cup in memory of my birth, yea, each in quest of all these lands. Kind sir, how now, wouldst thou not drink from out my cup? Prithee, come solace me, live while you live for a i c c c can't i s -s say i have to s -s stack the hay the days roll on and now a blase youth rides by the manor house a reaper he in wisdom's fields no importuning maid bade him alight she beckons quick he opes the gate and hastening to the banquet halls he drinks to her and pledging endless love they fly to distant parish. Now the hills and vales and lands that roll away are his. While I, down here in meadowlands all day, I only s -s stack the hay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If I Can Be By Her by Benjamin King. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber. I d -d don't c care how the r robin sings, or how the r rooster f flaps his wings, or whether it sh shines, or whether it pours, or how high up the eagle s soars, if I can b -b be by her. I don't care if the p -p people s say, had I'm weak-minded every way, and never had no c common sense, I'd c c climb the highest picket fence, 
if I could b b be by her. If I can be by her, her I'll s swim the r r rest of life through th thick and thin. I'll throw my overcoat away and s stand out on the c coldest day if I can b b be by her. You s see, she weighs an awful pile, b but I d d don't care. She's just my style. And any f f fool could p plainly see she'd look well b b by the side of me if I could b be by her. I b b braced right up and had the s sand to ask her f father for her hand. He said, what prospects have you got? I said, I g g guess I've got a lot, if I can b b be by her. It's all arranged for, for, for Christmas Day, for then we're going to r r run away. And then s s something that c couldn't be at all b before will then you s s see, b b because I'll b b be by her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Toboggan by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org By Alan Lawley Down from the hills and over the snow Swift of a mentor's flash we go Toboggan, toboggan, toboggan Down from the hills where thy sense is lost Jealous of cheeks that are kissed by the frost Toboggan, toboggan, toboggan with snow piled high on house top and hill, o'er frozen rivulet, river and rill, clad in a jacket of seal skin fur, down from the hills I'm sliding with her, toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. Down from the hills, what an awful speed, as if on the back of a frightening steed, toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. Down from the hills at the rise of the moon, Merrily singing the toboggan tune, Toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. Down from the hills like an arrow we fly, Or a comet that whizzes along through the sky. Down from the hills, oh, isn't it grand, Clasping your best winter girl by the hand, Toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. Down from the hills and we hear the chime, of bells that are ringing out old father time. Both from the hills we are riding away, nearing the life with its endless day. Toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bugle on the Hill by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith I don't like the noise of the marching of the boys, And I loud don't suppose I ever will. Ere the tramping of the feet to the drum's wild beat, Ere the sound of the bugle on the hill. It minds me of the day when Gabe marched away, And old missus stood beside the cabin door. Something whispered in my ear about my little volunteer and said he never will come back no more. I remember now the day just how he marched away with the bright sun air climbing up the sky, marched out and down the street to the drum's wild beat, then they fetched him home to die. Oh, the sad and moanful way. Poor old missus kneeled to pray when Gabe said, It's getting mighty still. But I rise and jine the boys when I hear the cannon's noise ere the blowing of the bugle on the hill. It peers as if I seen the old plantation green, and sometimes I surely think I hear the regiment pars by, and loud I hear the cry and the moan of my little volunteer. 
and I see the mournful way poor old missus kneel to pray, and sometimes when all round is still, I can hear the tread of the feet to the drum's wild beat and the blowin of the bugle on the hill. Dar's a spot mighty dear to this old darky here, where the sunlight is peepin through the palms with his hands upon his breast. Dar my soldiers gone to rest jest peacefully or sleepin in the calms and the drums wild beat or the tread of marchin feet no mo can't disturb him now till the lord gives command then i know he'll rise and stand at the sound of the bugle on the hill end of poem this recording is in the public domain Old St. Joe by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Of all the towns that jest suits me From Stephenville to Manistee There's one old place I can't forget It ain't a great ways off and yet From here it's sixty miles or so In a beeline that's Old St. Joe I don't pretend to write and ain't one of them air chaps to paint, for I was, I tell, of scenes to lie stretched out before a feller's eye. Er, when the sun was hanging low, I painted right from old St. Joe. I've seen folks gather thar in crowds just for to watch the golden clouds changing shapes and sort and winding into figures never minding. That old lake spread out below, reflecting em at old St. Joe. Underneath them cedar trees is where I used to take my ease. Birds are singing all alone, the hedge and each one had a song, and sung its best to let you know they just got back to old St. Joe. There ain't no prettier sight to me, that is, According to my ID, than just to watch the gulls at fly round that old pier and hear em cry, and circle round it peers they know fishing's good at old St. Joe. Course the people over there they don't notice em or care what they're wearin bout is frost and where their strawberries is lost, yet they pair to take things slow just the same as old St. Joe. Sipped in rumour tis their health is middling good, and as for wealth, they got that and lots of land, course the sill is mixed with sand, but that's what makes the berries grow over there in old St. Joe. Take it generally as a rule, a fella likes it where it's cool, where he can sleep and drink in air, that comes perfume from orchards where the peach trees just begin to blow, then where's a place like old St. Joe? Such cool breeze blowing back keeps the skeeters making tack, and the flies they mostly stay up round Pipestone Creek, they say. Tell you what one thing I know, there ain't no flies on old St. Joe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tramp by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson He came from where he started And was going where he went. He hadn't had a smell of food, Not even had a scent. He never even muttered once Till he began to talk. And when he left the kitchen door, he took the garden walk. He said, There's no one with me, because I am alone. I might have scintillated once. My clothes have always shown. I got here for the other ones, because I started first. The reason I look shabby is because I'm dressed the worst. Then I asked him where he came from. This was just before we parted. He muttered indistinctly, Oh, I come from where I started. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Chautauquan Maid by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. She had studied every ology, ichthyology, zoology, philology, geology, conchology, and more. Knew the bones of every mammal, from the mouse up to the camel, and the mollusks and crustaceans that crept on every shore. To think her up on history was not at all a mystery. She could name you any ruler from old England to Sumatra. It would certainly amaze you what she said about Aspasia and the little unsophisticated maiden Cleopatra. She had studied Greek and Latin, Hebrew, Sanskrit. Please put that in. Read Xenophon and Horace, Ovid, Virgil and the rest. She didn't say I'll learn you, but teach you that Calphurnia sewed fifty-seven buttonholes in Julius Caesar's vest. She loved to pull the petals from a flower, the baser metals. She doted on their study, and for nuggets she would bone you. She loved the dromedary, and the docile cassowary, and the feathers of the emu she had stuck in her chiffonia. She had studied evolution, and arrived at the solution, how long our first appendage was, of course I didn't ask her, but she said that she'd resolved from what she knew that I evolved from, a carrot-haired chimpanzee she had seen in Madagascar. She could scan iambic metre, and she knew each Roman praetor, and surprised me when she told me the way the empire came to fall. The Huns sneaked in the forum, and the Romans tried to floor him, but they got themselves in trouble and, of course, got whipped by Gaul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I'm a Blue Jay by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. I'm a Blue Jay and never mind If my toe does stick out behind when I catch on a limb, I'm there for keeps, lest I let go, of course I must eat. Sometimes you know I have to just let go of that hind toe. I'm a dead sure thing in spring. As soon as the weather's kind of warm, you'll notice me on a fence. I feel immense in my blue suit. The woods can catch my chirp. You hear my toot from then out. If you don't shoot at my blue suit. I put ripe cherries in my face, same place I wedge all the bugs, and don't you ever think at I'm no good and sponge my way, do I? I guess I'll fool ya. I eat ya darn circular. I guess I work my way if I'm a jay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rastus King by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Catherine Rivera. As you happen just to mention old time friends that sort of bring memories back, I'd like to ask what's become of Rastus King? Did he go out west prospecting far on California's rim? Did he settle with the Injuns or did the Injuns settle him? What a great big hearted fellow Rastus was and how he'd sing! Sometimes tears will start to rollin' when I think of Rastus King. Where is he and what's come of him? Is he toiling hard for bread? Is he prosperous and wealthy? Is he livin' still or dead? How my heart recalls the mornin' that I met him splittin' wood, payin' for his school tuition, earnin' thus a livelihood. Allers boarded at the neighbors, turned his hand at anything. Faithful, honest, well, the farmer simply swore by Rastus King. Find him down to meetin' Sundays, sittin' in the deacon's pew. Talk about your knowledge. He had read the Bible through and through. When the choir would join together and with the congregation sing, way above all the other voices you could hear him, Rastus King. Did you ever come to meet him? Do you think he's living here? Say, he ain't much older than I am. Reckon now he's sixty year? Last I heard he's doing splendid. Rich, fast horses, everything. 
Just like him, a regular schemer. Oh, I knew him, Rastus King. Then the hackman I had been asking all these questions thus did say, Rastus living pretty quiet. Don't go out at all, they say. Don't go out at all? Why, stranger? What's the matter? Did he fail? Well, said he, nothing's the matter, Stephen. Only he is in jail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. That Valentine by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama That Valentine Once I remember years ago I sent a tender valentine. I know it caused a deal of woe. Once I remember years ago Her father's boots were large, you know. I do regret the hasty line. Once I remember years ago I sent a tender valentine. I know I never can forget I sent the tender valentine. Somehow or other I regret, but how I never can forget. But then I know, I know I met her father, oh, what grief was mine. I know I shall never forget I sent a tender valentine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Good Ship by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I's been watching long for de good ship, the good ship de Lord sent to me, and it appears de hits had a long voyage, crossing life's troublesome sea. I expected it long in de morning, when nary a sail was in sight, and I's looked for it long about noonday, and watched for it way in de night till I cast my eye over the vanless old ocean, and what did I see? Off there in the hush of the distance, the good ship a coming to me. So I laid my head down on my pillow, forgetting life's worry and sin, and when I awoke in the morning, my good ship had done got in. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Casual Observation by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf Dar's nothing here but vanity And riches and insanity De dollar seems to be de people's god Dar's a heap too many scariots A riding round in chariots While de poor man am a carrion de hod Dar's too much haste and hurrying And too much wealth at burying and dis here ting am gettin worse and worse it takes all ob de rakins de scrimpins and de scrapins to liquidate dispenses ob de hearse dar's heaps ob care and worry everybody's in a hurry and a few am growin richer every day but de most of us must shovel for de children in de hovel and silently await de judgment day End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Like the New Friends Best by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienauber Don't talk to me, o old-time friends, but just give me the new. The old friends may be good enough, but somehow they won't do. I don't care for their old-time ways. Their questions you'll allow are soulless as a parrot's gab. Well, what you up to now? That's one thing I've agin em, cause that, with all the rest, like hintin' bout some old-time debt, I like my new friends best. I meet an old friend in the street, as oftentimes I do, Mechanically he stops to shake, and say, Well, how are you? Then drawn down his face as if his cheeks was filled with lead, he says, I suppose you've heard the news. No, Eli Stubbs is dead. And for he died, he asked for you, seemed sorry you was gone, and said at what he'd let you have, he hoped would help you on. Now that's why I don't like em much, 
you probably might have guessed. I ain't got much agin em, but I like the new friends best. Old friends are most too homelike now. They know your age and when. You got expelled from school and lots of other things. And then they member when you shivereed the town and broke the lights out of the school and then run away and played hunt coal out nights. They member when you played around your dear old mommy's knee. It's them can tell the very date that you got on a spree. I don't like to forget em, yet, if put right to the test of hankerin right now for em, I like the new friends best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Negro Song of Home by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Tain't very many people what listen to a nigger, and nowadays any sense in what he say. But I's gwine to give to experience of my feelings, and I figure that day's quite a smart of people thinks my way. When a man begins a shouting about the good things that he's missing, kick in case they ain't a fortune in his job, let him go home to his kitchen and set down a while and listen to the singing of the kettle on the hob. I've heard the strains of Ohm Sweet Home when Patty was a singing, and the audience was a spilling of their tears, but I didn't mind the singing for a different tune kept ringing with its honky kin of the music in my ears. And I recognized the melody so powerful bewitching that, that made my heart like sixty for to throb. And I immediate felt a hankerin' for my cozy little kitchen and the singing of the kettle on the hob. The rich man can inhabitate a place if he wishes with brick or brack and pictures on the wall and can lay on velvet sofas and eat off in golden dishes but I wouldn't swap my kitchen for his all, for it wouldn't be like home to me, but seppin' I could listen, a puffin' at the backy in my cob, while the good Lord seem a speakin' of a home-like kin a blessin' through the singin' of the kettle on the hob. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sposen by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Sposen. What if the new San Francisco should sail to Chilean waters away, with the Boston and Yorkton afar in the east, and the Lancaster off in Bombay? In the big Philadelphia, sposen she was a loadin' with tea in Japan, with the Concord and Bennington flyin' so gay, their colors around Hindustan. And sposen the Charleston was in Bering Sea, with the Newark and Pamlico Sound, and the Mayan Tonomas big bilers should bust, and the Baltimore run hard aground, then sposen we got off in a fight right away with Chile or even Peru, and England should work the shell game on New York, say, what in the deuce would we do? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Rasmus by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith A great good spirit come down from above And took little Rasmus away Took my little Rasmus that played peep with me And rode out to Bramberry Cross on my knee Took poor little Rasmus away Took my little Rasmus that played round the door And danced at the sunbeams that fell on the floor took my little Rasmus away. That's why I's downhearted and can't find relief, and old and bent over, I's loaded with grief, case Rasmus has done gone away. The great good spirit comes down from the sky and hovers round every day, and it appears what yo's loving a little too much, the good spirit takes it away, cause he took little Rasmus away.
but I know the good spirit must be mighty glad, but this dock is hot and just mournful and sad since Rasmus has done gone away. And mostly at morn when the whimpering breeze am loitering up in the sycamore trees, and at noon when the sun dances round on the floor, this old dock is hot am just burdened with woe, and at night twixt the wind and the pattern rain, my poor soul and body am restless with pain, since Rasmus has done gone away. But I know the good spirit comes down from the sky and hovers round every day, and it peers what you worship a little too much. The good spirit takes it away. Cause it took little Rasmus away, took poor little Rasmus away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nobody Knows by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienaber Nobody knows when the cold winds am blowin' Or all the poor little chillin' am a-goin' Nobody knows when the night time's hoverin' How many little ones and destitute of coverin' Nobody sees but the Lord done see em And by and by the Lord'll tell humanity to free em Nobody knows just how many am in rags a sleepin in the hot blocks and round on the flags. Nobody sees all this poverty and woe a livin on the emptyins and not a place to go. Nobody sees but the Lord done see em, and by and by the Lord'll tell humanity to free em. Nobody knows where this poverty all comes, how many poor folk am sleepin in the slums. Nobody knows just how few am befriendin', but the good Lord knows there must soon be an endin'. Nobody sees, but the Lord done see em, and by and by the Lord'll tell humanity to free em. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Does Not Hear by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Sh 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 she does not hear the r r r r robin sing, nor f f f f feel the b b b balmy b breath of spring. Sh sh she does not hear the p pelting rain, b b beats ta ta tat tattoos on the. Whoa, whoa, window, papa, pain. Sh, 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 she ca ca cannot see the autumn s -s sky, nor hear the wild geese s -s stringing b -b by. And oh, how happy t -t tis to know, sh, sh, she never fulfills an earthly woe. I s -s spoke to her, sh, sh, she would not speak. I c c c c kissed her, but c cold was her cheek. I could not twine her wo 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 wondrous hair. It wo wo was so wonderful f f fully rare. B b beside her s s stands a v v v vase of flowers, a gilded c c c c clock that t t tells the hours. And even now the f f firelight f f f falls on her, and d d dances on the walls. Sh sh she's living in a p p p pure life, where there's no t t turmoil and no strife, no t t t tongue can m m mock, no words embarrass her b b b. By g g gosh, she's p p plaster Paris. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Down the Mississippi by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. 
oh de old plantation landin on de mississippi show pears as if i seed old massa standin waitin dar once mo back a ways to whar de cabins almost hid by de lilac trees seems as if i heard po missus singin old time melodies hollyhocks and honeysuckles grow and bloom along the way leadin up dar to de cabin but de old folks where are dey and the winding path a leadin round de house sometimes a spell seems as if i heard de windless hoistin water from de well cap'n can you stop de boat sir stop de boat case well i know i has done gone down dis river bout as far as i care to go you can land me soon's yo's ready and i low i'll find my way back to dat old shattered homestead where the sun shines through to-day massa lincoln's gunboats left it jace dat way in sixty three cause they did some monstrous damage but they set us darkies free how i member po old missus standin in yah de cabin do and she say yo gwine off rasmus and yo gwine come back no more then i said not exactly missus somethin's done ketched on to me dar's a big stampede of darkies from cane tuck in tennessee when the boat comes up the river whistlin round the lower bow i must leave the old plantation yas must say good-bye and go massa sort of bowed his head sir sittin in his old arm-chair missus standin on the doorstep caught the sunlight in her hair and the breezes from the orchard peered to rustle through the trees and i heard old judy weepin with the chillin round her knees tell yo i was mighty sad sir but i sort of walked away years and years ago it was sir now i's wanderin back to-day deed i's lookin back and gazin mostly now each side the stream landmarks gettin mighty natural claw hit piers jes like a dream dar's the place dat's hit dar cap'n dis yer side the old horn bow low yo needn't stop the steamer jes slack up a little slow dar's the same old steps a climbin from the landin to the hill land of goodness ef the bushes ain't growin thicker still and the land of the forgotten not a soul along the hill not a voice to wake your gladness everything do peer so still not an echo to a footstep not an answer to a call cept a mockingbird a singin to the lonesomeness that's all end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mermaid by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Sweet mermaid of the incomparable eyes, Surpassing glimpses of the April skies, Thy form, ah, maid of the billowy deep, So rare and fair, but to possess I'd creep Where the old octopus, deep in his briny haunts, Comes forth to feed on anything he wants where mollusks crawl and cuttlefish entwine there on crustaceans be content to dine what ecstasies in some calcareous valley but i had the scales like thee tis there we dally there seek each peak and let no other bliss be more enchanting than one salt sea kiss there sit and bask in love and sigh and feel each other's fins throb or perhaps we'd steal through some lone cavern i suppose you know a place where we could pluck the polyzoa or in your boudoir by your mirror there i'd comb the seaweed from your auburn hair hut hush a red-haired mermaid sister comes this way and lashing with her tail the wavelets into spray cometh she alone or yonder watery pampas oh no by jove there comes the white hippocampus in the poem this recording is in the public domain the blackbird fetched a spring by benjamin king read for LibriVox dot org when the autumn leaves was twistin and a tryin to get loose 
and the apples in the cider press had done turned into juice when the blackbird got downhearted and made up his mind to go it was then the time this darky's heart was just parboiled with woe he was with me in the furries in the summer fields of corn and around the hookin cherries deed he was most every moan and he helped me drive the horses clucked and clucked to make em go that's why i allow this darky's heart was just parboiled with woe but he noticed that the yellerin was a comin on the leaves and the wind was sort of whinin too just like a dog that grieves and with nothin in the cherry tree except in winter's breath one day in fall he loud he go in jest skip out himself i can't partially blame him cause i'd went if i's him Low he knew the winter weather would dum freeze him to the limb cause he couldn't hardly navigate or couldn't cluck or sing and so he said good-bye old man i's comin back in spring this mornin honey deed i heerd when everything was calm a song dat tetched my poor old heart like oil of gladdest balm and who should i see settin dar upon de old hay rack but my blackbird show sure my blackbird and he said i's just got back then he opened up his warble when the gentle wind so soft came dancin from the hilltops dar on o'er the meadowcroft and down here by my cabin do he sang and flashed his wing and i praised the lord of glory cause my blackbird fetched the spring end of poem this recording's in the public domain appearances by benjamin king read for librivox dot org the man that was the slickest tile don't draw the biggest check the richest looking kind of sow don't yield the biggest peck the horse that's highest in the pool don't always win the race case sometimes he's a little off and sometimes held full place the bulldog with the ornery jaw ain't half so bad to meet as that dar yellow mongrel cur that's land for your meat the moody cow that hists her leg and makes the milkmaid scream am just a bossy cow that gives the richest kind of cream the mule that have the wicked eye ain't half so bad now mine look out for that old sleepy mule yo's walkin round behind end of poem this recording is in the public domain the girl with the jersey by benjamin king read for librivox by jason in panama the girl with the jersey you can sing of the maid who in faultless attire rides out in her curtained coupe her robes are exquisitely fashioned by worth at eve they are decolle but i i will sing of a maiden more fair more innocent too i opine you can choose from society's crust if you will but the girl with the jersey is mine i know her by all that is good kind and true this modest young maiden i name i've walked with her talked with her danced with her too and found that my heart was aflame i've written her letters and small billet do revealing my love in each line you can drink to your slim satin bodiced gazelle but the girl with the jersey is mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain If My Wife Taught School by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith If I had a wife that taught school, I would go to faraway countries. I'd fish from the Po in a gondola gay, and the splash of my oar would be heard by the natives around Singapore. If my wife taught school, I would, wouldn't you? Or wouldn't you? anyway what would you do 
if I had a wife at taught school, I would get something fine in the shape of a furniture set. If I could pay my board and she could pay hern, there's a good many nice little things I could earn. If my wife taught school, I would, wouldn't you? Or wouldn't you? Anyway, what would you do? If my wife taught school, you can bet I would fly. Like a condor, I'd roost pretty middlin' high. I'd wear a silk tile and own horses, I vow, and do lots of things I ain't doin' now. If my wife taught school, I would, wouldn't you? Or wouldn't you? Anyway, what would you do? If my wife taught school like some women do, and I couldn't earn quite enough for us two, I'd go in the barnyard without any fuss. I would blow out my brains with a big blunderbuss. If my wife taught school, I would, wouldn't you? Or wouldn't you? Anyway, what would you do? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Spinning Wheel by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf Do you remember the old spinning wheel that stood in the attic so many years ago? Twas covered o'er with dust, and our mother used to say, Twas an old family relic of our grandmother's day. How the spinning wheel would creak, as if it tried to speak, recalling tender memories of yore. How back in other years her eyes would fill with tears as she heard the hum upon the attic floor. Creak, creak, how it would creak when up in the attic we'd steal. But mother would say, boys, come away from grandmother's old spinning wheel. Do you remember the cobwebs that clung to the old oaken beams in the house we were born? And there from the rafters how memory brings back the sage and catnip and the dried apple strings. But ah, uh, no other joys compared when we were boys, when we played upon the dear old attic floor. To slowly turn the wheel and the spindle and the reel would sing the dear old song it sang of yore. Creak, creak, how it would creak when up to the attic we'd steal. But mother would say, boys, come away from grandmother's old spinning wheel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Owl and the Crow by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Alethea There was an old owl with eyes big and bright Who sung in a treetop one calm summer night. And the song that he sung I will now sing to you. To wit! to who who to wit to who who he sang there all night till early next morn when the crow came along that was looking for corn the crow heard him singing to wit to who who and offered to sing a few notes that he knew just then the old owl in the tree top so high with his classical shape and his big staring eye requested the crow in the deepest of scorn to sing his old chestnut about stealing corn caw caw said the crow well my deeds are by light i don't steal young chickens and sit up all night with dew on my feathers when i break the laws in looking through cornfields it's not without cause end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Clouds and Gwinder Pass by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Nienhofer The weather's mighty warm, and I guess it's gwine to storm. Don't you see the swaller flyin' to the thatch? Black clouds is sweepin' by, just a skimmin' long the sky. There's a hustlin' in the huckleberry patch. There's Zeke and Hezekiah, Jane Ann and old Moriah, mighty scary when they see the lightning flash. How they hustle to the cabin where old Dinah am a blabbin', and the hoe cake am a bakin' in the ash. 
I told you, case I know, just what make it thunder so. That's the way God shake the rain out of the sky. And when you hit a sound, like a shoving tables round, you can see the pigs a-running to the sty. But the clouds am gwine to pass, and the sunshine out at last, while the pickaninnies play around the door. And through the window blinds, hid by morning glory vines, hits a gwine to flicker down upon the floor. God moves in many a way, so the old Bible say, for he counts the drops and all the grains of sand. And when the darkness falls, pon these here cabin walls, hit em just the break of day in other lands. Then hurry, chillin, hustle why you may, case you know it is gwine to come a rainy day. But the gloomerin will pass, and the sun shine out at last, and the darkies clouds of sore pass away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Summer's Afternoon by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama A Summer's Afternoon Twas the close of a summer's day, the sound of the flail had died away. The sun was shedding a lingering gleam, and the tea kettle sung with its load of steam. The old clock ticked that hung on the wall, and struck at the same old cuckoo call. Then oft I could hear the mournful bay of some watchdog far away. Then all teronked piped in a jay, I just sought there with my senses gone, and the shatters of twilight a creepin' on, with the eerie hum of the small peewees over there in the cedar trees, and the tinkle of bells in the marshy loam, that told me the cows were coming home, and the sighing breeze came o'er the croft, but ah, comes a melody far more soft than the troubled notes of a Lydian lute or the echoing strains of a fairy's flute. It bids me awaken and live and rejoice, tis only the sound of Elvery's voice. Like an angel's whisper it comes to me, Wake up, you fool, and come to tea. And it ain't in the spring, or it ain't in the fall, But the close of a summer's day, that's all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Fed the Fishes by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. One day a big excursion sailed afar out in the lake, all bent upon an outing with their sandwiches and cake. They sought the upper deck until the wind began to blow, when all engaged in different things, as every one must know. While I fed the fishes, I fed the fishes, I fed the fishes clear to old St. Joe. Good Captain Steins went up on deck to cast his weather eye. A woman sadly, badly prayed, O oh, father, let me die. The cabin boys ran back and forth in staterooms all around, while voices shrieked, O oh, mercy up, O oh, up, wish I were drowned. But I fed the fishes, I gave them my best wishes, I fed the fishes, clear to old St. Joe. The pilot boldly held the wheel as through the waves we sped, while Purser Hancock ran abaft to hold some woman's head. One fellow sat him down and sang, Goodbye, sweetheart, goodbye. Most everyone seemed occupied and sad to say, Then I, I fed the fishes, I fed the fishes, I fed the fishes clear to old St. Joe. The Shikora rose up in the air and then came down. Kasok! She wibble wobbled in the sea and once she struck a rock. The purser wore a pallid look, the woman all turned pale. While well, calmly I sat on deck and hung over the rail. For I fed the fishes, I gave them my best wishes. I fed the fishes, clear to old St. Joe. Some tried to eat their sandwiches, some staggered, reeled and laughed, 
while others went below to smile and there the brown ale quaffed the steward richard waters rushed about with whisky slings most every one seemed occupied and all did different things but i fed the fishes i fed the fishes i fed the fishes clear to old st joe end of poem this recording is in the public domain old bossy cow by benjamin king read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson Poor old bossy cows down in the marsh, down in the marsh where the cold winds are blowing. Every now and then when the storm dies away, seems if I hear the old bossy cow alone. So out by the cabin do I stand under sweep and listen in the wind and dampeneth weather, and appears that I hear old bossy cow again, and I know that she say, Come down in the meadow. Then down through the marshland, trampin' along, down through the gloom, and the night rains a fallin', pickin' my way through the whisperin' reeds. Cobas, 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 a callin'. Then all of a sudden I come to a stop, and dar old bossy cow so gentle and so kind, and I coax up old Brennell, and I lead her by the horn, a wee little bossy cow comes follerin' on behind. A wee little bossy comes following on behind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. That Cat by Benjamin King. Read for LibriVox.org by Alethea. The cat that comes to my window sill when the moon looks cold and the night is still. He comes in a frenzied state alone, with a tail that stands like a pine-tree cone, and says, I have finished my evening lark, and I think I can hear a hound-dog bark. My whiskers are froze and stuck to my chin. I do wish you'd get up and let me in. That cat gets in. But if in the solitude of the night he doesn't appear to be feeling right, and rises and stretches and seeks the floor in some remote corner he would explore and doesn't feel satisfied just because there's no good spot for to sharpen his claws and meows and canters uneasy about beyond the least shadow of any doubt that cat gets out end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Frog's Thanksgiving by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. A Frog's Thanksgiving I'm a frog with a shanty built over each eye, and a terrible push when I get on a hump. There's very few reptiles that's one half so spry, or can come up alongside of me on the jump. I'm a frog when the other birds take to the wing and wander away beneath balmier skies, I belong to the bloated Bactrachian ring, with a pneumatic palate for coaxing in flies. I'm a frog in the fall, and a frog when the frost spreads over the land and the forests are grey. I'm a frog keepin' house at a very small cost, in a dugout I've built out of cattails and clay. I'm a frog with a green overcoat and a voice that tickles the woods when the winter's no more. The old folks are glad, and children rejoice. At the first tap of thunder I let out a roar. I'm a frog living down in the lush of the swale. You all know my voice when I'm looting for game. They call me a cannibal. What a sad tale. Well, maybe I am. I'm a frog just the same. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lovey Loves by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Lovey Loves O oh love, let us love with a love that loves, loving on with a love forever. For a love that loves not the love it should love, I wot such a love will sever. But when two loves love this lovable love, 
love loves with a love that is best and this love loving lovable love lasting love loves on in pure love's loveliness o oh, chide not the love when its lovey love loves with lovable loving caresses for one feels that the lovingest love love can love loves on in love's own lovelinesses and love when it does love in secret should love tis there where love most is admired but the two lovey loves that don't care where they love make the public most mightily tired end of poem this recording is in the public domain hank spink by benjamin king read for LibriVox.org by melanie t hank spink he said ere bob did his brother at he hit a man once for some pin or other and he hit him i got this from bob he simply rint right out and give him his job not hank or bob but that feller at got hit give us his job see he said at the wind uh, the force of his blow uh, something like that somehow i don't know just now what it was i got it from bob at he got a good swat not hank or bob by a long shot but the fella at got hit got a good swat see he said he'd be blamed at he didn't know how he came to strike such an all-fired blow except he guarded his right and threw the hull left of his weight and his science and his hit with his left that lost him his job not hanker bob but the fella at got hit lost him his job see end of poem this recording is in the public domain the nile by benjamin king read for LibriVox.org by jason in panama the nile not a single cloud bedims the sky not a shadow falls below but crocodiles creep enfeebled by heat through the lotus flowers that grow on the banks of the nile the placid nile the nile of ages ago so sluggish and wan it wanders on where the citron and doom palms grow where sphinxes stare through the lurid air at the sun in its molten glow that's called the nile the tranquil nile of ages and ages ago on the purple sheen of its mirror heart her galleys bend and row and egypt's queen can still be seen of olden lands the foe ah this was the nile the ancient nile the nile of the long ago by the ashen banks of the ancient stream the acacia tree bends low the ibis stands in this tomb of lands as if in a pallor of woe on the banks of the nile the sacred nile the nile of ages ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain like the old mule bass by benjamin king read for librivox dot org some folks is sort of partial to the cattle round the farm to make a pet of animals they find it sort of balm while others for the poultry stock the goose and duck and ham is often made the most of by the wisest kind of man some like the brindle mooly cow and loud they have the sense to appear to know their massa when they see em at the fence some like the yearling colt i've rarely seed men stand round and pet a hoss all day and rub his legs and fetlocks down but givin all the animals the fairest kind of tests i sort of like the old mule best some pet the mockin bird and robin redbreast and the linnet some like the gobbler case he's struttin round most every minute some like the peacock for his pride and then some like the dog whilst others for companionship have preference for the hog some farmers like the wetter sheep and some the little lamb the billy goat and nanny goat whilst others for the ram some like the little weak old calf when buttin round his mother and some folks they like one thing and then some folks like another 
but of all the stock i's raised with in the south or east or west i sort of like the old mule best dar's something meekly about him it's a fact he isn't bold and the expression on his face is like the holy saints of old when he sort of hissed his heels up like he's gwine to hit the sky he's simply exercisin just to pester ray to fly and the why he peers so embarrassed is case nature had to fail and made him sort of long on ears and kind of short on tail but then he's more than attached to me and i know i is his friend and we done made up our minds to stick together till the end so dar's no use of yo axin me yo's done had time ter guess i sort of like the old mule best i used to like lucindy but then cindy couldn't stay and little sim i worship so the angels coaxed away and lizan and brer zeph dar up on the hill i partially think i hear em too when all round is still yo see i's mowed and lonesome here with nobody to talk er hide behind the lilac trees or down the garden walk that when i look at that old mule i feel so full of woe bout little sim at rode on him and taint so long ago of all the friends that's left me now i rarely must confess i sort of like the old mule best end of poem this recording is in the public domain The River of Life by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org I dreamt that I saw the river of life That flows to the Jasper Sea The angels were wading to and fro But none of them spoke to me Some dipped their wings in the silvery tide Some were alone and some side by side Nary a one that I knew could I see In that river of life the river of life that flows to the jasper sea the river was wide that river of life the bottom i plainly could see the stones laying dar was whiter than snow the sands looked like gold to me but angels kept wading to and fro where did they come from where did they go none of them sinners like me i know in that river of life the river of life that flows to the jasper sea the water was clear as the well by the gate while jesus the light first see the softest of music from angel bands come over that river of golden sands come over that river to me and then i saw the clouds break away revealing the pearly gates of day the beautiful day that never shall cease where all is joy and love and peace and over them gates was written so clear peace to all who enter here the angels was gathering round the throne the gates done closed i was left alone alone on the banks of a darkening stream but when i awoke i found twas a dream i's gwine to ford that river of life and see the eternal day i's gwine to hear them heavenly bands and feel the tech of old-time hands that long had passed away those crowns of glory for all i'm told and lovely hearts with strings of gold and i know if dar's peace beyond that sea with rest for the weary does rest for me beyond that river that river of life that flows to the jasper sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Cat and Nine Tales by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org. The old Cat and Nine Tales is coming round again, and the way he worries children sometimes is a sin. He grabs them by the collar and he yanks them by the clothes and reaches for a tender place. Why, what do you suppose will happen if you're impudent and sit around and grin? well i'll have to call the cat and nine tails in have to call em in yes have to call em in in tails cat and nine old i'll have to call the old cat and nine tails in old cat and nine tails in 
are you sassy to your father are you fibbing to your mother are you quarrelling with your sister and a pinchin of your brother do you ring around the rosy till you have a dizzy feeling and you think you're going round and round and walking on the ceiling well you better stop your screeching and a making such a din or i'll have to call the old cat and hind tails in have to call em in yes have to call em in in tails cat and nine old i'll have to call the old cat and nine tails in old cat and nine tails in do you allers mind your manners when company is come or do you get upstairs and yell and stomp around and drum do you show off at the table too and try to act up smart and paint your finger at the things and say give me a tart if someone doesn't dress you down i think it is a sin so i'll have to call the old cat and nine tails in have to call em in yes have to call em in in tails cat and nine old have to call the old cat and nine tails in old cat and nine tails in end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hair Tonic Bottle by Benjamin King, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Hair Tonic Bottle How dear to my heart is the old village drug store, when tired and thirsty it comes to my view. The wide-spreading sign that asks you to try it, Vim, Vaseline, Vermifuge, Hop Bitters too. The old rusty stove in the cuspidor by it, that little back room, oh, you've been there yourself and oft times have gone for the doctor's prescription, but tackled the bottle that stood on the shelf. The friendly old bottle, the plain labeled bottle, the hair tonic bottle that stood on the shelf. How oft have I seized it with hands that were glowing, and guzzled a while ere I set off for home. I owned the whole earth all that night, but next morning my head felt as big as the capital's dome. And then how I hurried away to receive it, the druggist would smile o'er his poisonous pelf, and laugh as he poured out his unlicensed bitters, and filled up the bottle that stood on the shelf. The unlicensed bottle, the plain labeled bottle, that hair tonic bottle that stood on the shelf. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Circus Turkey by Benjamin King Read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Gerges The Circus Turkey He's the worst I ever see, that old turkey up in the tree. I've been pesting him and punching him since morning. I never since I was born see the way he do stick on, and he appears to look down on me as if he's scorning. He doesn't seem to appear to have a bit of fear, cause I's wasted all my strength and breath upon him. And maybe he's in fun, but I'll scam with this gun, I's bound to get it down some way, dog on him. I's throwed most all the sticks in the yard and all the bricks, if you was me, what under the sun would you do? He doesn't seem to change, and pierce to act so strange, I clear he must be pestering with a hoodoo. I tell ya, it's a fact. I nearly broke my back a hoisting shoes and brick bats up there to him. Upon this Thanksgiving day, I hate to shoot, but say I believe a gun's the only thing'll do him. I allow I make him think he can't get me with the wink and sight up on that limb and be secure. Biff bang, I'll make him sing. My goodness, watch him swing. Why, he's a regular circus turkey sewer. I see the whole thing now. That Ramses boy, I allow, has gone and tied his feet up there with strings. No wonder that he tried to come off. He was tired, and all he could do was flap his wings. Come here, your Ramses, quick say. I's mind to use that stick, say. Come here from over there from where he stood. I allow I had to lay ya down on the ground and flay ya. I was tempted most to use a stick of wood. You can't go to meetin', and when it comes to eatin', your mother says you can't come to the table. I bet you'll sing a tune, cause all this afternoon we decided that we'll lock you in the stable. 
You can't have none of the white meat, and you can't have none of the brown meat. And you just hearing what your poor old mother said? You can't have none of the stuff, and all the cranberry sauce or nothing. And so I said, at six o'clock, you go to bed. End of the Circus Turkey This recording is in the public domain.